Good day and welcome to the latest edition of the Battlestar Galactica franchise uh, documentary. I'm delighted to be joined by the one and only Ed, Ed Begley Jr. who played the character Sergeant Greenbean in the original Battlestar Galactica series that was released back in 1978. Ed, 1978. Long time ago now, uh, Battlestar Galactica, when it came out at first, uh, what was the whole experience and the whole journey like for you in that? It was lovely. I was a <clears throat> itinerant actor at that point. I hadn't had any real success much at all. I'd been uh, on a, a show after that called St. Elsewhere, and that got me a little more attention, and things got pretty easy after that. But Battlestar Galactica, I was still... Battlestar Galactic, I was still a, just a working actor that worked hither and yon and didn't have a contract anywhere. I was not really contracted to do that show. I was on a case-by-case -case basis, episode-by-episode -episode basis, playing Ensign Greenbean. And I remember it vividly. Dirk Benedict uh, was an acquaintance of mine. It was great to work with him. I'd known him a while and Richard Hatch and Marin Jensen I've seen fairly recently. And uh, it was a great, to work with Lauren Green was great, of course, and John Colicos, these wonderful veteran actors. It was just great. Herb Jefferson, I see from time to time. And it was just a, a joyous experience. I really loved working on it. I only, I think I only did about five or six episodes. I can't remember that important detail, but it was something like that. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned uh, the opportunity of uh, five episodes. Uh, you mentioned the opportunity and you mentioned the acquaintances of Dirk Benedict. And uh, is that how it came about that you got involved in the show? Uh, did you audition for the show or were you recommended for your role? I was not recommended. It was just, a, you know, an audition situation. I auditioned for the part of Ensign Greenbean and then got it. And uh, But here's something that was kind of a bonus with playing that part. As I said, I only did about five episodes. I can't remember the exact number, but I think it was five. But for every day I worked, and it was not a huge amount of money per day, but it was good for me as a working actor that was not under contract anywhere. It was like 500 or $750 a day pay back in 1978 and 79. That was, those were good wages for me. And I'd work one day on camera and shoot the scene. You, me and the fighter jet or what have you, me, as a pilot in the in the aircraft, we'd shoot that scene. They'd call me back a day or two and say, we got to reshoot the scene. You were going right to left instead of right to, left to right. So you okay. we got to reshoot it. So we'd reshoot it. Then they'd say, we got to redo the sound. They were creaking these boards. You know, They had these big pieces of lumber that they put underneath the model, the aircraft, and they'd move it around like we're, you know, jostled around flying in space. And so that, but you could hear the sound of the creaking boards of the, as a local lady grip, people were moving the plane around. So you got to go in and do a loop day. Back in those days, they still had an actual loop. They call it looping or ADR, automated dialogue replacement, where they replace sound that's bad because of a plane overhead or creaking boards or another actor, you know, makes a noise during your line, something like that. It, but the term looping, it was actually still a loop back then at Universal. They have a loop of tape, audio tape, sprocketed audio tape that goes, the marshal are going to run us out of town. The marshal's going to run us out of town. The marshal's going to run us out of went in a loop. And you just kind of heard it like three times. Okay, I'm ready. You put that little earphone on and you have the microphone. They brought, marshal's going to run us out of town. And so that's what I did. I go and do one day of reshooting, one day of looping. So I always got three days for every one day I was booked. It was a, it was a bonanza for me. And uh, Ed, in terms of uh, Battlestar Galactica, 21 episodes, uh, a sci-fi sort of series when it came out in 1978, uh, it was sort of a, a new sort of time. It was something different in the Star Trek and the Star sort of wars, but it gave something of the sci-fi fans uh, something uh, different. And I imagine at the time it was a, a big enough sort of budget production. Uh, what was it like on set or what were the sets uh, like in terms of back then in 1978 in terms of the props and equipment that, that you worked on in, t in the set back in the start? In those years, starting in 1967, when I started as an actor, and certainly during this period, 78, 79, when I worked on the show, um, I worked on low budget productions, TV and film, medium budget, and kind of higher budget. This was in the third category. It was a higher budget show. It was a TV show and not a movie, but it had a pretty large budget, obviously, by the amount of trucks and cameras and equipment and props and, you know, everything. They, they had a... Uh, 
who has done it, shot at Universal, as you surely know, and aired on ABC, I believe. And, uh, and so they had a pretty good budget. So I was very happy to work on the show with a budget. Obviously, because every day I got booked, I worked two extra days. So three days for what should have been just one day's work. It was a big budget show and very exciting for me to work on. I was, you know, hoping that I would be asked to be under contract or what have you. That never happened. But I was grateful for what I did have, which was uh, several episodes work. At first, I thought it was just one episode. Then it became two or three. And finally, I think it was... Five. I wish I remember the exact number, but I think it was five. It was five, yeah. Oh, and, good. Uh, you have it in your records. Yeah. Uh, Ed, in terms of uh, Battlestar Galactica, 21 episodes at the time back in 1978. That was a, an awful lot of episodes. I know now in t- modern climates, they roll off two or three seasons and they had 20 episodes uh, per season. But back in those days, if you got 21 episodes uh, in the series, it was deemed very much a success. Yeah, they were very happy with it. Uh, Universal was, I think ABC was. I, I, we were all hoping it would go more episodes and I would get some more work out of it. I'm sure everybody felt that way. But another thing that told me it was a big budget show was I believe they had John Dykstra do the special effects, the guy who had done, done 2001. I'm not for sure about that, but I'm pretty sure it was John Dykstra. So he was a very high end, you know, visual artist, computer graphics. When back in those days, they did some stuff via computer, but a lot they did mechanically, if you will, or chemically, if you will, with actual celluloid. That was one of those shows they still shot on celluloid because back 78, 79. And when they did optical effects, they were optical effects done with optical printers and stuff in the laboratory. Not really, they did some computer stuff, I'm told. I don't know that for certain, but a lot of it was just simple old movie magic, which was optical printers and uh, blue screen and things like that. Back then they did blue screen. This is before they used green screen. They would do something called blue screen back then. Yeah, and Ed, you mentioned your friend and acquaintance there, Dirk Benedict, and this was before Dirk Benedict played his famous sort of role, Templeton Peck, as we all know him in the A-team. This uh, came before it, uh, Battlestar uh, Galactica, and that was a sort of a breakout sort of show uh, for Dirk Benedict, he, his character, sort of Starbuck, and it sort of propelled him on then, as obviously we know then, the huge global success. It was a global success for him, Battlestar Galactica, but he went on to massive things all together in terms of the A team. Uh, for uh, Dirk back then, was it a real breakout sort of show for him? It was. It was a good career move for him doing the show. He was very good in the show, and it couldn't happen to a better guy. You know, he's one of those actors that had success, and the bigger they are, the nicer they are, and that's him. He was a sweet guy before, during, and after his success on Galactica and the A team. Wonderful, wonderful fellow. Yeah, and uh, Ed, you mentioned there working uh, on the set and some of the characters there and uh, some of the characters still kept today, the iconic Commander Adam, uh, Boomer, sort of Starbuck, Apollo. They all sort of got reinvigorated into the new sort of stars, uh, Battlestar Galactica sort of TV series show. And do you think it was just that they, back in 1978, they fell on a sort of really good script, a really good premise for a show? And obviously he had your take in it and then it was made into a famous sort of remake remake as well in the early 2000s as well which developed the cult following yeah it was a good show to begin with but i saw the the more recent uh incarnation of battlestar galactica with my good friend my dear friend my close friend edward james almost he's so wonderful and he was wonderful in the show and those episodes were fantastic it had a much longer life as regards years and episodes and so i was very happy to see that i thought it might have another thought i Hoped it would have another life at some point, and it did. And that was a wonderful incarnation of the show. If you like the, the more recent episodes, I certainly did. Yeah, and I was actually speaking to mention Edward uh, J. Olmos. I was actually speaking to Edward there yesterday, and he mentioned to me about uh, the, the actual set, his involvement, uh, wanting to things feel more reality. They had a real polished set, and he was saying that he wanted the things to feel like it was old and used and sort of give it that sort of realism use. And uh, in terms of uh, year or sort of episodes uh, back then, Ed, uh, well, did you get the opportunity to watch them back or was it a case that you went in, you did your part, uh, you came away and 
little behold, you might have saw it, see it maybe three, four months down the line again, or were you privileged to see your work firsthand? I was. I had a very small part, of course. It wasn't a lot to see for me, but I watched it religiously. I, uh, you know, back then we didn't have DVR equipment, of course. Some people had Betamax back then, tape machines. Uh, VHS was, I think, just starting back then. Uh, people had three quarter inch decks, more professional equipment they would record stuff on, what have you. And, uh, but I watched it back then. You, I didn't know anybody with a, with a tape deck. So I was compelled to watch it live, which I did so I could see it live. You know, you either caught it the first time it was on in prime time or rerun. And then that was the end of it until, you know, there was no end of it. They ran it quite a while in syndication. It's now on somewhere in some, you know, uh, some streaming venue somewhere, I'm sure it's available now, but to watch the show back then, you had to be sitting in front of your TV at a certain night at a certain hour to see it. And uh, Ed, you mentioned being involved in the Battlestar Galactica sort of franchise, which is spawned on now. We're going, I'd say, 50, 50 or more sort of years now since the original series. Do you still uh, sort of get asked to conventions or sci-fi conventions or to talk about your role in Battlestar Galactica? You, is it still a, a popular sort of request that people still even to this day, like I'm speaking to you, I like to speak to you about your time in the show? I've never been to any of the Battlestar Galactica conventions, but I was um, asked to come to one of those just regular generic autograph signing section, uh, sessions. They would have them for a day or two in Los Angeles. So I think I did one in Maryland or somewhere once too. Yeah, Atlantic Nostalgia Show or something. I can't remember. But I've done like three or four of those autograph signing shows. And there was always a hunger. There was always an appetite from the fans for Battlestar Galactica pictures. I learned quickly after my first time doing where I just had like an actor's eight by tens to sign. I learned for the next show, you had to have stills from the show. And I thought there was some copyright issue with that. I might get in trouble if I had a still from the show. The, the might, there certainly is copyright laws in place, but I guess they don't enforce them because people are selling actors all over, selling these stills from the show, wherever they're getting them. I, I don't know if somebody who handled me printed them up uh, but I did those those shows and I quickly learned there was a great appetite for Battlestar Galactica photographs and people had questions about it and an interest in it and a great amount of knowledge. And I was quite pleasantly surprised. And it, what struck me at the time, the TV series was very popular. I mean, 21 uh, episodes. Uh, was there any sort of inkling or uh, script in production or in terms of a movie back then? Obviously, after 21 episodes, you'd be thinking that there, uh, uh, there might be an, a lineup for a movie back then, maybe in the early 80s or something like that. Was there ever a case where it was close to come about? Did you ever hear anything or was it ever rumoured to, to be coming about uh, in terms of a script or something? I did see evidence of it via Screen Actors Guild residuals department, the re rerun department, because you would get checks from Battlestar Galactica for foreign release theatrical. That is to say, they made it into a movie that they showed overseas, apparently. I don't know where they showed it. I don't know if they showed it in Ireland or where they showed it. But I got checks in the early 80s or thereabouts, late 70s or early 80s for theatrical release of Battlestar Galactica. I remember it vividly going, theatrical release, it's a movie somewhere? Okay, whatever you say. But they sliced and diced it a hundred different ways. I got checks from that show, not huge checks, but checks that I was always happy to cash, you know, in the mailbox for different incarnations of Battlestar Galactica. Galactica. The same five episodes I did, just part of a different thing shown here, shown there in different ways and cut together in different ways and was always pleasantly surprised and happy to get the money. And Ed, when the new Battlestar Galactica uh, franchise came about um, back in the early 2000s, I know Richard Hatch uh, was the sort of link between your show and the new start of Battlestar Galactica. Well, was there ever talk maybe of you uh, reliving re some sort of a character or, or playing a new sort of a role in the new sort of Battlestar Galactica franchise? Or was it uh, obviously, was it just maybe something that it didn't come across, it didn't happen for, or didn't wasn't mentioned about, or, do you know? No, I didn't hear any anything about uh, another version of Battlestar Galactica as regards my employment. But uh, 
you know, fortunately, I've been working a lot since 1978 and 79, but I would have been happy to, you know, talk about such a possibility. But they had plenty of wonderful actors and plenty of wonderful stories. They didn't need Green Bean. It was, if they had, I would have been happy to do it, I'm sure. But uh, they had many other fish to fry. It was a lovely show, and uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, and uh, Age, you've played uh, many roles uh, throughout your career in terms of movies, in terms of TV series. And you mentioned that was a, a role for you starting off, really, in the, in the early midst of uh, your career. Uh, how do you start to rate that character? How do you start to put it into context now? Looking back, would it be in your sort of top 10 in terms of what you've done or top 20? Would it hold a dear place uh, close to your heart, the character Green Bean? And is it something that brings uh, back fond memories for you even to this day? There are fond memories associated with the show and it came at a pivotal time when I'd had my second child. I had uh, two wonderful children who are now grown a third child 21 years ago. But uh, back in those days, I had a young family. So that employment that uh, Don Belisario and Glenn Larson gave me was very much appreciated. I, you know, it was a good job and I loved doing it and uh, went on to do other things. As I said, St. Elsewhere, and I did a lot of those Christopher Guest movies, Best in Show and A Mighty Wind, and For Your Consideration. I did She Devil with Roseanne Barr and Meryl Streep. I worked on, you know, uh, movies with Jack Nicholson and other wonderful actors and work with wonderful directors. I'm, I'm blessed to still be working at age 71 and I've worked a lot since 19, 1967. My God, that's 53 years. So I'm very grateful to still be working. Uh, it, uh, no doubt you've many more projects to come, many more TV series, many more films. Uh, 71, there's a long career still ahead of you there. Uh, Ed uh, Bigley Jr., an absolute pleasure talking to you today to relive your memories of Green Bean in uh, Battlestar Galactica uh, appearing in back in 1978. A uh, vital role in the franchise's history, uh, one of the modern uh, eras, one of the first uh, step foot in the Battlestar Galactica. Uh, a pleasure talking to you, uh, Ed, and uh, as we say, lots of more um, movie memories to come and TV franchises uh, to come for you down the line. And uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and take care. Thanks so much, Jim.